Hello. This video is essentially a walkthrough of assignment one. Now I'm going to try to go fairly quickly so that it's not too long, and I'm not going to repeat what I did in the previous video. I'm going to refer to it, but that's already been gone over. But I'm going to show you how to make sure that you do everything correctly and try to get all your points for assignment one. So your first step is to make a new folder for this assignment, assignment one, name it intelligently, and have it inside your web apps folder, in your documents folder, on your own computer. The second thing we need to do is open up Atom. There's Atom coming up. And if when you open Atom, you're still getting this welcome screen, Notice there's a checkbox here. It says show welcome guide when opening Atom. Take the check mark off and then you won't see this anymore in the future. Okay, so we can close the welcome guide, close the welcome guide, and we'll never see that again now that we took the check mark off. Okay, so uh, with this window open, with a new blank window open, uh, if I didn't have a window open, I could say in Atom, I could say uh, new window. And if I drag my project folder from the finder into Atom, I will have all my files that I've got in that folder ready for me to use, which is really the best way to work in Atom. So I'm going to grab that folder, just drop it into Atom. And you'll see that I already have some files inside my folder. So to try to make the video go more quickly. Now, this is a file that Windows people don't have. Mac people have automatically. Don't worry about it. Don't delete it. It's just something that your, um, your operating system makes. Um, I've got two images in here. And I've got a plain text file. I named it vespa.html. I could name it index.html. That would be good. Um, but because it's about Vespa motor scooters, I named it vespa.html, lowercase v. And right now it's just a plain text file. And it's got in it the things that you're required to have for your assignment. So I've got a Wikipedia URL. I've got one image URL and one image attribution. And I've got a second image URL and a second image attribution. So you might be wondering, how do I know that I need those things? Well, they are all listed in your assignment, which is linked in Canvas. So you would open assignment one and you would find out what you need to do for your content before you start the HTML. So I have already done everything in the content criteria because you don't need to watch me do that in a video. I am going to now start with the HTML criteria. And the very first thing is the basic structure tags and elements that we went over in the previous video. So my first job is to put those things into this file. So I have gone ahead and put the basic structure elements at the top of my file, the ones we always need, doc type, HTML, head, slash head, body. And at the bottom of my file, after all the text, I have put the two required closing tags, slash body and slash HTML, closing the tags that were at the top. Okay, so I now have my content and I've got my basic structure tags here. Uh, I have not yet put in a proper title, so I'm going to do that now. You must always have a title. It's a required element for every HTML page. And just to demonstrate something for you, I'm going to make it a little bit different from my what will be my H1, okay? So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna load it in the browser to see what it looks like my assignment one folder, go inside there, and just double click the HTML file and it will automatically open in your default browser. All right, so it doesn't look like much yet because we have not added the semantic tags within the text that appears in the browser. So what you see in the window looks like a mess. 
But one thing you'll notice is up here at the top, you will see that my title appears in the tab in the browser. This is one of the reasons that the title is so important. And you'll see it is not the same as what will eventually be my H1 down here in the content. Okay, so let's put some semantic tags on this uh, content. And the first thing we've got right here is our main heading, the heading that appears within the browser window. So the main one, the top one, is always going to be an H1. So we open the tag, we close the tag, voila, we've got an H1. Then we have a paragraph. A paragraph is a P, and it ends with slash P. Then we've got another one, so we could do some copying and pasting to be, uh, to be efficient here. So if I copy that, paste, 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 not for these though, okay? Um, not yet. We'll talk about those in a second. Those are for the images. All right, copy the closing tag. So do not forget your closing tag. At the end of a paragraph, you must have a slash P to close the paragraph. And if we look at the page in the browser right now, we don't have to go back to the finder. You can just go to the browser and click reload. And now we've already got a heading that looks more like a heading and we've got paragraphs that have been separated out. All right, we'll check the assignment for what else we need to do, what else is required. And we'll go down to this list, and we see that we need at least two subheadings, both of which will be H2 level headings. So I'm gonna to have to write those myself. So I will go into my content and I will look at, you know, uh, I've already read my content, so I actually know where I want these to be. So I've got h2 slash h2, right? And in between, I am going to say why a wasp. That was a subheading that makes sense for that paragraph. And then I will put another one, uh, h2, same kind. And back in say. So if I save and reload, I now see that I have two subheadings, both of the same weight. And remember, we are not using HTML for design or for appearance. That will be done with CSS later. So if you don't like the way these headings look, don't worry about it. That is not a thing to be fixed with HTML. Let's check the assignment and see what else we need. Uh, I happen to know that I have four paragraphs, so I've met criteria number three. And I need a link to the Wikipedia entry from which I got my text. Well, I have this at the bottom of my file right here. But right now, this is not contained in any tags. In this course, we have not yet learned how to make a link. We'll learn that next week. So we're not going to make this a link we are simply going to surround it with paragraph tags. That is, we will make it a P element, and that is sufficient, that is fine for now. What else do we need? We need exactly two images. Now, I've already downloaded the images, so I need to insert the images from the files that I have downloaded, not link to the Wikipedia page, which I've got here. We're not going to link to the live images. That's hot linking, and that's completely unacceptable. You do not link to an image on the web within your own document because it's stealing somebody else's bandwidth. So what we will do is we will figure out where we want to put the images. I think I will put the first one here outside any paragraph by itself, and it has two required attributes, the source and the alt, and what is my source going to be? Well, because I'm not linking to Wikipedia, my source is my own file right here. So if I want this one, I can actually copy and paste from here. So I can do a copy, right? and put it in here, paste, oops, not the way I wanted to do that. 
And what should my alt be? Well, it's a picture of a man on a Vespa. So I will put photo of a man on a Vespa. Okay, so the alt value should describe what's in the image. And where should I put my other image? SRC equals quote quote, ALT equals quote quote. So now I have this ready to go. What is my other image? That was Command A, copy, paste, Command V, and Alt. In this case, it is a photo of a small frame Vespa 90. So let's see what my page looks like now. Do I have images? Not until I reload. Don't forget to reload. So I reload and voila, I have images. I have one here. I have one here. Now remember that I am linking to the ones that are in the same folder right here with my HTML file. There is something else that remains to be done. To see what that is, number six, in order to conform with the rules for using these images from Wikimedia Commons, you must provide the URL to the original, not to the article, but to the image, and you must provide the attribution. So I have copied those in my document down here at the bottom, below my Wikipedia URL. So this is the one for the small frame. So I will Command X to cut that. I will find the small frame. I will type a P element, and I will paste this right into the middle of that P element. And just to make this a little neater, I am going to put a BR element right after the URL. I will save and let's see how that one looks. All right, so this is what I just added. And I'm going to add the same kind of mm, caption underneath this one as well, the man on the Vespa. So I already put that information at the bottom of my file. So I will Command X to cut it. I will put it under my other image tag right here, my image element. P to surround it, slash P to close it. Go in the middle, right in there. Paste, Command V to paste. And I will add a BR tag right here to make the URL just a little neater. And I will save and I will reload. And here is what I have added. We could possibly make this in italics using the EM tag for emphasis. Um, or we could make it bold using the strong tag for, um, to make it bold, strong. I'm not going to do that because I want to wrap this video up. But if you look at what I've got here in the browser, this is what you're going to have and what you're going to hand in. Hopefully you can follow these instructions combined with the more detailed information that you'll find in chapter four in the book.